Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Ben, bringing you the best in our veteran, military spouse, and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's special guest. Amen with that. You know, we're celebrating our 200th episode with this prominent figure from Central Florida. We have the city of Orlando, Mayor Buddy Dyer, here in the room, in the building, virtual that is. <laughs> Mayor, welcome to the show. Start off, tell us a little bit about you. Well, first, thank you, Vince. Thank you, Enrique. It's a pleasure. I know a lot of shows that don't last 200 episodes. That's for sure. So enjoyed uh, the uh, opportunity to spend some time with you guys. So a little bit about me. I was actually born in the city of Orlando. Um, I grew up in Kissimmee and uh, went to Osceola High School, um, pre-Disney. So there are only about 7,500 people in the whole Osceola County. And it has obviously changed dramatically. Um, I went to, uh, I played football and baseball in high school, um, went to Brown University and got an engineering degree and then worked for four years as a civil engineer, went back to law school, got my law degree and practiced law for 15 or so years. And uh, during the course of that, I was elected to the state Senate and was in the Senate for 10 years. And uh, I ran for attorney general in um, 2002. Turned out not to be a great year for, I'm a Democrat. A lot of people don't know whether I'm a Democrat or Republican, but I'm a Democrat. Uh, I ran for attorney general. It wasn't a good year to be a Democrat running statewide. And um, our model was that as long as the gubernatorial candidate didn't lose by more than 10, we would win. The model was spot on. Problem was the gubernatorial candidate lost by 16. We lost by three. So, oh, well. But if, if you want a leadership question, we always talking about doors closing and other doors opening. Uh, that door closed and the uh, then incoming governor, which was Jeb Bush, appointed then Orlando Mayor Glenda Hood to be Secretary of State. And there was a special election for the last year of her term and um, there were a lot of people already in, and that was never in my playbook. I didn't have Mayor of Orlando written down anywhere, and a lot of people encouraged me to do it. And I had represented a lot of the city in my Senate district, so I was pretty well-known and also well-versed in things around the city. And one morning, when I was contemplating whether I might do this or not, the pastor of the largest AME church in Orlando called and said, our congregation has just spent the last hour praying about you running for mayor, and we think you can do it. You're the only person that can walk in every black church in the city and know the pastor and walk in every boardroom and know the chairman of the board. So that was pretty compelling to me when the pastor calls you and said you're being called to do this work. So I was fortunate enough to uh, win that election. I've been elected five times since then. I've been in 21 years. and. Uh, this I was just reelected in November, and this will be my last term. I'm going to finish out with 25 years, and I've enjoyed every single day. I like to say I'm the happiest mayor in America, um, which is true, other than two COVID years when there were no happy mayors anywhere in America. So that's kind of a short, quick version. And what an illustrious record there, uh, and amazing. You're right. When you get a divine message, you just need to go. <laughs> and and good uh, for you that that actually resulted in your last decade plus of, of service here. As long as I can remember, Mayor Buddy Dyer was on the monorail coming through the airport. <laughs> you, you know, Enrique, something funny. People often ask me, what's your biggest achievement or what are you known for? And I think I've done a lot of good stuff, but I get more notoriety for the voice on the tram than any single thing that I've done. And I get so many people say, I know that I'm home when I hear your voice on the trail. That's for sure. And I, that's exactly how I feel. I'm home. Now, Mayor, there's a lot of intricacies to the role of mayor, but give us an overview of what you do as mayor of the city of Orlando. So I am the CEO of the city. So I'm the chief executive officer. And Different city governments are laid out differently. Some mayor's positions are more ceremonial or they're just a member of the council and you have a city manager. But most of the big cities, the mayor is actually the chief executive officer of the city. That means I appoint all of the executive 
positions of police chief, fire chief, director of public works, top lawyer, you name it, and on down from there. And then I help to operate the city functions, although I'm a pretty good delegator in that regard. We can, that's another thing if we get into leadership talk, but it's, it's surround yourself with good people and then delegate to them to be able to do their jobs. And then also, um, you know, Orlando is known everywhere, right? You, there's nowhere in the, the world you can go that you don't know Orlando. So um, you have a big bully pulpit here to be act, able to act on regional and even statewide issues. So um, I feel that role leading the community in a variety of things like creating SunRail or building the three community venues, the Performing Arts Center, the now Kia Center, and the and Camping World. So leading some of those initiatives is a big part of the mayor's job as well. And then in my mind, being the protector of our city and all the things that we hold dear. I just had a grandson lately, so now my perspective is not just making sure that we're going to be a good city a decade from now, it's we need to be a good city 50 years from now. Absolutely. Having that strategic vision, especially as a CEO running this wonderful city, you mentioned you highlight some of the initiatives, some of these initiatives, some of these projects. What are those current city projects you'd like to share and or you'd like to share more about how you give back to the local community? We actually have a lot going on right now. We're now um, going to be responsible for creating the Pulse Memorial. There had been a foundation that had headed that up for seven years and they were unsuccessful. So it wasn't something we wanted to take on, but we felt like we needed to take that on. So that that's kind of in around getting SunRail uh, to the airport is certainly something that's in on my next four year list. Um, renovation to Camping World again to get the third deck on it um, and renovations to the Kia Center. Finishing the second phase of Creative Village is another thing that is high on the list. And then the everyday of dealing with the issue of affordable housing um, and also the issues of homelessness, especially in the Paramore downtown area are things that um, I think about just about every day. Yeah, very key uh, issues and important things to address indeed. Now, everybody has a future uh, forecast for whatever plans they have. So what's on the horizon for the city of Orlando? Continued growth and managing that growth. We have between 1,000 and 1,500 people moving to Central Florida, not all to the city of Orlando, but to Central Florida every single week. So you think about how that strains our transportation infrastructure. It certainly had an impact on our housing market and the affordability of housing. So those are a couple of things that I keep in mind and I'm working on every day. Um, one of the aspects that I like to talk about also is to continue to have that culture of collaboration that we have come to expect in our community that we all work together. We put aside either jurisdictional or partisan or um, ethnic differences and work together to do the important things in our community. And I think we do that just as well, if not better than anybody in the country. No, absolutely. Cultural collaboration indeed is really where we all thrive together as a whole. Unity and strength in numbers. Love it. And soon we'll have the Jetsons around so we can fly around because we're having so many folks coming into a wonderful Orlando. Well, you know what? We're going to be one of the hubs for advanced air mobility. We have two companies that are headquartered here. You know, we're waiting on the federal government to figure out what the rules are going to be related to that. But don't be surprised if we end up being one of the leaders in that area. Yes, indeed, Mayor. This is the leader right here. The Jetsons will be real here in Orlando. You heard it first today. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> now, switching gears a little bit and talk about leadership. What do you do to continue to strive and helps you in your leadership growth or professional life? Learning how to turn off when you're not when you need to and having some relaxation and not being trying to be on 24 hours a day, I think is important. And I guess as uh, I'm 65 now, so I was in my early 40s when I started and maybe realizing that you need a little bit of sleep and you need to have good energy 
um, to come in with. So taking your care of yourself physically and emotionally um, and mentally, I think is an important aspect of leadership. I've already mentioned surrounding yourself with really good people um, that you can rely on and that you know their strengths and weaknesses that you can delegate to and trusting them. And I like to, to say that we've created a culture that the vast majority of people in our organization, if they're in a decision-making situation, they would make the same decision I would 95% of the time because it's clear to them what our mission is and what our focus ought to be. That both of you being from the military, you know, that type of training that you need to know from the top down that everybody's on the same wavelength and would make the same decision that the commander would make, right? So sim similar to that, we wanna make sure. And then I tell them, you know, the other 5%, I've got your back. You need to have that freedom to make the decision that you think is the right decision. Absolutely great things to uh, pass on uh, to other leaders to do, especially the knowing to turn off when, when you don't have to be on. It's a yeah. critical thing for a lot of leaders. One other thing I tell uh, young people is to always do the very best of your capability at whatever task you've been given, because you never know when somebody's watching you, say you were given the sweep the room job, but somebody's watching you and decides you're the best room sweeper I've ever seen. I'm going to give you a chance to move up and do something else. And you never know what opportunity might present itself because you've done a good, good job on the task at hand. That's definitely great advice. And speaking about young folks coming up uh, and being emerging leaders, what advice did you receive as you was coming up that you would like to pass on to them today? Wow. You know, I had great respect for my high school football coaches and baseball coach. And, and actually, believe it or not, I was very active in drama, which um, we had this great drama teacher that attracted all the athletes into the drama program. So we'd go from football practice to practicing one act plays. Um, but they were always believe in yourself and believe that you can do whatever your goals are that you set. Uh, I ended up going to an Ivy League school and I was the only second kid in my high school to go to an Ivy League school. And there's when I graduated, there was all, probably only about less than 20% of our class that even went to college. So, you know, it wasn't an atmosphere where you would normally think about going on to an Ivy League um, school and being successful, but that's what my goal in life was to do. And I did the things that were necessary to achieve that goal. Definitely follow that passion, right? And it will not stir you away. So I love hearing that. How about a leadership aha moment? Well, one that's very memorable to you, like to share with our audience today. You know, one of my mentors was Lawton Childs. He was governor while I was in the Senate. <laughs> and and um, he led in a very humble manner. So, but he always got his message across. And he's somebody that you, you felt was wise and you would listen to him. And, you know, there are some people, lots of people in public now, and especially with social media, they're just talk and talk and talk and talk, and you don't find him wise. So being judicious in terms of just not having to yak all the time, I guess is something I would say that I learned from him being, you know, if it needs to be said, you say it and lead with your words, but it doesn't have to be all the time. I also believe that a wise man will make sure that his words are few, but impactful. And especially if you want to be a leader, words should be weighed, especially nowadays, and especially at the leadership level. So great, great advice or, uh, or memorable aha moment there. Uh, what are certain strategies, especially as a mayor of a city that has so much going on? We were just talking about all the things that are going on in Orlando. Uh, certain strategies that you use uh, with yourself or your team around change and challenge? Again, it's the ability to collaborate and partner. So to partner with, say, Orange County government on some of the things we're doing, or, you know, we've become the place in the country for 
sports destination. We just had the uh, marathon and the Pro Bowl in the same weekend. So partnering with both Joe Sports and Florida Citrus Sports and everybody is in their lanes, but they they know their job and we're complimentary, complimentary in the sense of we help each other out. Um, so I think that is the most important thing is being able to work together and know what one another is doing and be able to be support and not work in silos. Oh, absolutely. As you prefaced it earlier, you know, the culture of collaboration is key and, and communication as well as I heard. So thank you for sharing all the pearls of wisdom, your journey, four more years, sad to see you, but you know, 21, 25 coming up. But now, folks listening in, how do they get a hold of you or the city of Orlando, Mayor? Orlando.gov is our email. And specifically, anybody in the city of Orlando, it's it like me, it's buddy.dyer at Orlando.gov. So if you know the person, and then you could go certainly go to our website. And um, actually, we have really good IT people here. So it's a pretty usable website to get a lot of information or to find out how you can get information if it's not on there. And as an Orange County uh, citizen, I know because I've gone there many a times and it is user-friendly folks. We will have that information as part of the show notes and video for you to be able to get a hold of the city of Orlando or Mayor Buddy Dyer. Mayor, it's been a wonderful moment here to share with you our 200th episode and uh, we thank you so much. Folks, if you want to get a hold of us at the Leadership Void Podcast, the Leadership Void at gmail.com is where you'll send that correspondence. If you'd like a special guest speaker or us to cover a leadership topic, you'll do it by those means. And lastly, don't forget, we have great sponsors, Triple Nickel, A Hero for Kids, and Favov, Florida Association of Veterans-Owned Businesses. So, But today, our 200th episode, Mayor Buddy Dyer, thank you for being on our show. Much success, and thank you again. Thank you, guys. Have me back for number 300. <laughs>